Would you eat healthier if you were financially punished for eating unhealthy foods? Some areas are taxing sugary drinks in an effort to reduce obesity. But how would we measure the success of such a policy? And if governments are confident this could work, why only tax sugary beverages and not other unhealthy foods? Simply put, sugary drinks are the single biggest source of added sugars in our diets today. These sugar-filled diets are leading to obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Worldwide, sugar consumption has tripled over the past 50 years, killing an estimated 2.8 million people every year. In order to reduce sugar intake, the UK government imposed a sugar tax, which means companies will now have to pay taxes according to the sugar content of their beverages, and this could translate to higher prices for those products. In the UK, drinks with a total sugar content of more than 5 grams per 100 milliliters will be taxed 18 pence, whereas a higher tax will be imposed for drinks with 8 or more grams of sugar per 100 milliliters. Other countries also have sugar taxes in place, including France, Chile, Thailand, Finland, Portugal, and Norway. This way, the manufacturers are incentivized to make it easier for everyone to drink more healthily by creating beverages that have less sugar. Also, if people are asked to pay more for a sugary drink, they might be inclined to switch to healthier alternatives. For example, when Mexico introduced a 10% tax on sugary drinks in 2014, they saw a 12% reduction in sales of such drinks in the first year. And in Berkeley, California, the sugar tax resulted in a 52% decrease in the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. There was also a 63% increase in the consumption of water in the city's low-income neighborhoods. However, a study found that sugar taxes could unintentionally increase alcohol consumption. This is because many alcoholic drinks contain similar or higher levels of sugar than soft drinks, so a tax across a wider range of drinks may be more effective than just those with a high sugar content. Now, you might be thinking, just how much sugar can there actually be in one can of a soft drink? Well, it's much more than you'd expect. The maximum daily sugar intake for an 11-year-old is 7 cubes. Compared to that, in 500 milliliters of a typical energy drink, you're looking at around 13 cubes of sugar. In 330 milliliters of cola, it's about 9 cubes, and there are around 5 cubes in the 200 milliliter juice pouches. So, if you're substituting juice for soda in hopes that it's a healthy alternative, you may want to rethink your strategy. On top of all that, sugary drinks have no nutritional value. In fact, you tend to consume more total calories if you drink soda because liquid sugar doesn't make you feel full. In one study, people who drank sugary drinks in addition to their current diet consumed 17% more calories than before. A recent study, which looked at sugar consumption and diabetes in 175 countries, showed that for every 150 calories of sugar per day, which is about one can of soda, the risk of type 2 diabetes increased by 1.1%. To put that into perspective, if the entire population of the United States added one can of soda to their daily diet, 3.6 million more people could get type 2 diabetes. It's no secret that sugary beverages are detrimental to our health. But for millions of people, they're just too good to put down. If health incentives aren't enough to convince people to cut out some sugar, maybe the best strategy is to hit their wallets and create an additional financial incentive to go with the health concerns. Mm -hmm.